Hey y'all, Hunter Elliott, Rainshot.com. Hope you're doing well. This afternoon I want to talk to you about something that's actually pretty important, but is often overlooked. And that is how to correctly break in a rifle barrel. Now understand that rifle barrels, even really nice match grade barrels, like on this Remington Model 700, they're going to have minor and microscopic imperfections in the rifling. You know, understand as tools cut, they dull, they chatter. And so it's going to create, like I said, very minor imperfections in the rifling. Now, those minor imperfections really don't affect much, except they're going to grab copper off the jacket of the bullets, and that copper is going to begin to build up in the rifling. It's going to cause it to foul a little quicker, and it's going to cause the coincentricity of the word. I think that's a word. If it's not, insert correct word to, to be flawed. You know, as, as if, if fouling builds up more on one side than the other, it's obviously going to affect accuracy. So one step that you can do to eliminate that is to correctly break the barrel in. Now, on this Remington Model 700 VSF, chambered in 220 Swift. That's right, 220 Swift. We're bringing it back, baby. Hashtag long live the 220 Swift. Um, this is a test rifle that I'm working on for Remington. And while I have begun the break-in process, it is not complete on this rifle. And so I want to start this off basically as I just pull the rifle out of the box. So these rifles come and they've got a light coating of oil on them down the bore, you know, to keep anything. I know it's stainless steel, but just to keep any kind of corrosion from beginning. So the first thing you want to do is get your cleaning rod. Now I like a one-piece cleaning rod that is rubber coated. This actually, I do have a little extension on the end of this one to make it long enough, but it's all coated in rubber. And what that's gonna do is if the rod flexes or bends a little bit while in the bore, you've got this protective rubber coating. So if it does happen to touch the rifling, it's not metal on metal. Now, the reason that I had to add a little extension on my one piece cleaning rod is because this rifle I'm using a bore guide. Bore guides are also very important because it's gonna center that cleaning rod down the center of your bore. And also this one's got a nice little window on it. How I'm gonna start out is you can see I've got a mop on the end of this. And so I'm gonna just start the mop right here, hang it in the bore guide and I've got some, this is just isopropyl rubbing alcohol. You can use denatured alcohol, anything like that. I'm gonna put several drops, get it good and saturated. And what you're gonna do is when you first push this mop through with alcohol on it, it's gonna, it's gonna take a little bit and it's gonna, any kind of, anything left in the bore, any of that oil or coating or where it was test fired from the factory, it's just gonna kinda keep that, or excuse me, get that bore nice and clean and dry. And then once we're done with that, we know that the bore now is, is clean and dry. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna put one round downrange. Now I'm sitting here on kind of a rickety table at a 30 yard line. So understand that I'm not shooting this rifle for groups. I'm not checking zero. I'm not checking dope. The sole reason I'm here is because I just want to put a bullet down range. So the 220 Swift is actually pretty loud. So bear with me here. Let me get some ears in. and of course, eye protection. So you remove the bore guide. Now I've got the bolt here and I've already cleaned the bolt too. So the bolt is clean. It's, this bolt has a light coating of oil on it, but it is not dirty or fouled. Hold your mouth right. Okay. Well, it's factory loaded Remington ammo, so I don't know what I'm looking for, but force of habit, you know, you check for pressure signs and all that. Anyway, so that's one round down range. Remove the bolt, reinsert the bore guide, because now we're gonna clean it. And the reason we're gonna clean it is, remember I talked about the, that fouling and all those um, excuse me, the little microscopic and minor imperfections grabbing that copper off the jacket and it may build up on one side more than the other. Well, what's happened is 
it will, as you shoot it, begin to wear that stuff down and, and wear that stuff out. But if you don't clean the fouling off of it as you're wearing it, instead of wearing those minor imperfections out, it, you're just gonna have fouling build up on them. So I've got my brass brush here. Hang that off my bore guide. Now I've just got a, you know, use hoppies or anything that you want. I've got kind of a CLP here. It's got some cleaning and lubricating properties on it. And I'm just gonna get it, get a pretty good bit right there on my, my brass brush. Now I'm probably just go ahead and re-wet that and run it down again one time. All right. So now with the brass brush, as you know, cleaning anything, you've you've got a lot of the fouling out and you stirred it all up, but you definitely want to run a patch down it. So I like a brass jag. You know, the little eyelets that they sell, I don't like them at all. So I, I encourage you to get a brass jag. And I've got some nice patches here that are lint free. And I'm gonna, still using that bore guide. Alright, now what you want to do is take a look at it. As you can see here, it's pretty nasty. Now, it's not near as nasty as it was when I began the break-in procedure because as you break the bore in, it's going to make it easier to clean and it's not going to get as nasty. So, it being that dirty, I'm going to run another patch down it. And that one, other than just a light coat of oil, it's pretty clean. I'm not 100% satisfied. So. I'm gonna run one more down it. I know this seems like it's pretty arduous, and it is, truthfully, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of aggravating, but not only is it going to break the barrel in correctly, but it's going to help longevity with the barrel. So that last one I pushed through just had a little bit of light coating of oil on it. So is the barrel broke in? <laughs> not even close. I'm going to fire another round. eyes and ears All right, so like I told you, I've already started the breaking procedure on this barrel, but we're pretending like the rifle is brand new. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the second round fired through the rifle. Now what? The whole process over again. Bore guide. Brass bore brush. Pretty good bit of solvent. Now, as you break the barrel in, you're gonna notice that it's gonna become easier to push the cleaning rod down. Now, one thing I'm gonna mention, usually after every couple pushes, I like to wipe the cleaning rod off. 
See, still getting some nastiness on there. So just keep your cleaning rod clean. Now that I've done that, jag. I know y'all, this is kind of boring. And you know, it seems like it's a little aggravating, but trust me, it's well worth it. Now see, I can feel like right now, it's already easier to force this down. And that patch is, a, it's a little cleaner than it was. So basically, you're, we're gonna rinse and repeat that. I'm gonna keep running patches down it until it's pretty clean. And then that procedure you're gonna do every time you fire around, brass bore brush, patch it until it's clean for 10 rounds. Fire around, clean, fire around, clean, 10 rounds. Once you've got that done, probably ha the barrel is probably better than halfway broken in. So you can kind of skip ahead a little bit and maybe shoot two or three rounds and then clean it. A lot of times what I'll do is once I've shot all 10 rounds and cleaned after every shot, then I'll shoot a couple two shot groups and all I'm doing there is checking my zero. You know, two shot group really doesn't mean anything, but you know, you get out to the 100 yard line, you can check your zero with a two shot group. I'll usually shoot a couple two shot groups, cleaning after every two shots, and then I'll go shoot a three shot group and clean after every three shot group. Then I'll usually shoot five or six three shot groups and then clean after every three shot group. So it's, you know, understand that by the time you're done, you're gonna have 50 rounds, 60 rounds of ammo through the rifle for the break-in procedure. So if you have the opportunity to, to check your zero or, or work your dope on the rifle while you're breaking in, that's fine. Just as long as you remember, once you've got all 10 rounds down at cleaning after every round, you go and wanna make sure you clean it after every group. And don't shoot more than one three shot group and before you clean it. Then when you're done for today, if you haven't been able to break the whole barrel in at one time, then what I would recommend, taking your jag off, jag off come on y'all <laughs> i know that was kind of dirty and get your mop back wipe that mop off make sure the cleaner rod is, is is clean i'm gonna hang that mop into my bore guide then i'm gonna put a little gun oil on it and then you push that push that mop with oil on it through it and what that's going to do is that's going to line that inside of the bore with oil. And so that way, when you put the rifle up and you store it, not only is your bore clean, but it's now it's got a light film of oil on it. So you're going to prevent any corrosion. Now, make sure that you clean it at the end of the day. When you're done shooting, even if it's not broke in and you've shot your last round or last three shot group, clean it good and then oil it. And then you, it's safe to put up the weight to continue the break-in procedure. If you can get it all done in one day, that's great. But I also recommend that even if you're done and you know your barrel's broke in, when you take this rifle to the range, when you're done, I like to clean it right away. Go ahead and clean it while I'm at the range and run a mop through it with a light coat of oil. And that's just going to help preserve that barrel. So like I said, this is a test rifle from Remington. It's a Model 700 VSF chambered in 220 Swift. I am at the tail end of the break-in procedure. Um, I have shot some three-shot groups with this rifle already. Um, though I'm not ready for the full review, my 100-yard groups are running about a half inch right now, three shots with Hornaday and Remington ammos. Um, the 220 Swift is an excellent cartridge and we're bringing it back, man. Hashtag long live the 220 Swift. When I get into the full review of the rifle, y'all, I'm gonna talk a lot more about the 220 Swift as well as the rifle and this nice Leupold VX3i LRP, eight and a half by 25 by 50 optic that I've mounted on this rifle. So we got a lot to talk about, but you know, we're getting started good. We're getting the rifle broke in. Had several people shoot it already. Everybody's really loving it, the 220 Swift. It's very low recoil. It's the king of speed, baby. Hashtag king of speed. But I'm, I'm starting to get excited I'm super, super pleased with this rifle already. I'm really enjoying shooting it. When I take it to the range, you know, people say, oh, that's a nice rifle. What's the chamber? And you go, 220 Swift, it blows their mind. They're like, oh, that is so cool. So 
there's a tremendous amount of cool factor that goes along with having a nice rifle and a, and a pretty cool cartridge. I'm gonna get back to finishing getting this thing broke in. I got just a little bit left to do. As always, y'all, there's gonna be an article on rainshot.com that's gonna go over a lot of what I talked about as well. You can jump over there if I skimmed over something or whatever. If you disagree with how to break in a match grade barrel, I'm not saying that I am in all be all, but what I'm saying is this is how I've always done it. This is how I was taught to do it by some old school bench rest shooters. And I had a, a friend of mine I used to know years ago, I don't know what happened to him, and he shot for real bench rest with a custom handmade 220 Swift. And every time he had it rebarreled, he would always break it in using that procedure. Now, I know people are saying, well, the 220 Swift is a barrel burner. Well, when it come out in 1934, metallurgy and powder technology was not what it is. So it's really not any worse than the 220, uh, excuse me, the 22250. However, it is a far superior cartridge in velocity and accuracy. So with the Swift, I would recommend even once you've got it broke in, you know, clean, clean the bore every 10 or 15 rounds. I know that might seem still a little arduous, but it's a really cool rifle to shoot. So not, why not take care of it? Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling and I'm starting to touch on a lot of stuff that I want to talk about in the review. But I'm really, really excited. I'm really, really digging this rifle. And so y'all just stay tuned to rainshot.com for the full review coming. If you've got any questions or comments, list them on, you know, comment on a YouTube video. If you disagree with me, awesome. Tell me how you break in a match grade barrel. Maybe I can learn something. So I know I've run long, I apologize. Uh, you can always find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, the whole nine yards, social media. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your attention. Feedback, good, bad, right, or wrong. Look here, y'all. Thank you again. Take care of yourselves and each other. Look forward to seeing you at the range.